Never, never a dull moment in trucking. No, it's not. I mean, seriously, trucking is like its own entity. You you can literally just make a podcast or a talk show out of just trucking and never run out of things to talk about. They should make one. Oh, wait a second. We're, that's us. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say they, they did. Yeah. No. Hello. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's never a dull moment from, from things that truck drivers do to things the industry does to the things the DOT does to the makers to the companies. It's just constantly, constantly a, a what's the word, smorgasbord of, of it's like an entree of, of, of topics, just never ending, never dull. But I think you gotta love it though to do it. Well, yeah. I mean, I think when you when you love something that you do, you do it to the best that you can. Like when you met me, I was a trucker, and I was I was actually I had taken a local trucking job when you met me. You. That's when I no, worked for Lens. When, you worked for him, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I was already working for Lens, right. running. I I was like the Brooklyn guy. I would run Brooklyn, some New Jersey, but. Mm-hmm more Brooklyn than anything and you know of course we know the story how I always like to make it look like I was so struggling <laughs> but I, I but I did I I mean li- literally I drove them and I unloaded them it's it's, it's just something that most guys don't want to do but it's it's what we love though trucking like and you fell in love with it cuz you weren't a trucker you weren't nothing to do with in fact your family has nothing to do with trucking no not, none of them your dad was a game warden there's nothing to do with trucking there. Unless a trucker hits a deer on the road, <laughs> it, it has nothing to do with the game warden, right? No, nothing. No, I just, I'm just saying, like, and, and so when you look at, when you look at um, the uh, industry itself, um, compared to the, what you and your family were doing, you, you just kind of embraced trucking. I did. Yeah. Well, I embraced you, so, you know. Right. Well, well, yeah, of course. But I'm just saying, but with the trucking part, like you've become a little trucker girl. You know, that's what uh, I like that. And a little, you're like my little trucker girl. Yeah. So, but anyways, I I, I was just, I was just thinking like before we came on, I was just thinking, my gosh, there's never, it's just like, you can't run out of things to talk. Like the industry, like if you guys are out there looking to make a podcast in trucking, have at it. Give us a call. We'll help you. I mean, honestly, you can't run out of things to talk about. It's just, it's never dull. But that's if you like it. You got to like trucking to find everything interesting in trucking. Does that make sense? No, I agree. Right. Like, if like some people are like, oh, yeah, screw that trucker shit. Right? What? That, that's because you don't have an interest in it. You know, but if, if you really could see what trucking is all about to a man or a woman that is actually a truck driver or a trucker, then you would understand that there's nothing boring about it. I mean, there's some things that are more boring than others. Like right now you're rattling on about the... About the things to talk about. <laughs> but I haven't really <laughs> talked about anything. Uh, no, you know what? I do have some things to talk about today. I really do in trucking and... A truck driver can always give you a story of something that happened. Well, there's a couple things that I actually was looking at if you, if you really want to... No, let me let me start by saying this, and we've talked about this in, this before. There's a uh, a uh, a little article in Truck News, and it's titled "U.S. Legislation Would Allow Truck Drivers Under 21 to Cross State Lines." Nothing new. They've been no, yeah. But it seems like it's you know each time they talk about it and bring it up in the House or the Senate or wherever that's it's at, it seems like it gets closer and closer and closer. So. Before we go on and we I read the ins, the article, one of the things that I would caution everybody on is, first off, what's my opinion? Ask, I say, what is, what's your opinion on young drivers? Troy. Yes, ma'am? What is your opinion on young truck drivers? Well, that's a good question, Ruth, and I'm glad you asked that. Sure. My, my exact opinion is I'm all for it. I mean, seriously, laying all joking aside, I, I, I was driving a tractor trailer at 17 in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. I had my permit. My grandfather was with my grandfather. At 18, I had my, my permit and was driving all the time with him. All right? So, honestly, it, you know, and there's a dog box between you and, and, and in the big old cab over. So it wasn't like 
he could, if there was an emergency, he could get to me. I just had to go under his watchful eye, his mentorship, and follow his instructions. Of course, I had to learn how to do it on the, you know, the parking lot in, in his garage, learn how to back into the hole and drop a trailer and do all kinds of stuff before I was allowed to drive it. But I still, there was a point where, as a young guy, I w- had to be trusted to take the wheel. And my whole thing is, I know that I was a big screw up when I was a kid. If I could do it, anybody could do it if you really like doing it, if that makes sense. Yeah, you're rolling your eyes. You're like, what the hell? But <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I usually get most of what you say, and you know. Yeah, but so now here's here's my here's the quagmire that that I think should be thrown into the mix. Let's say it, it does pass. Okay. 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 It just passed today. So now where do we go with that? What insurance companies are going to insure? Drivers under 21. When most insurance companies don't even want to insure somebody before they're 23. There's some trucking companies out there. There's very few of them that will take a 21-year-old driver. Right. They have to be 23 a lot of times. And they are the very, very big trucking companies that are self-insured. Okay. These guys take on the 21-year-olds and they train them. But most trucking companies, okay, you have to have... Six months to three years experience, depending on the company, according to their insurance companies. So I don't see a million. And again, it could change. Maybe I'm wrong. But I don't see a million young guys really getting the opportunity. Well, the insurance companies are going to have to rewrite their policies if they want to bring in fresh meat, per se. Because, I mean, if you think about it, the industry... The, the the insurance companies rewrote a lot of their policies years ago because of a f- few bad, bad drivers, you know, the, the ones that were drinking and driving, having the accidents. I mean, they had to do a lot of rewriting, and the prices went skyrocketed through the roof for a lot of these companies. So then you have these companies that the insurance company has to approve someone first before they can even hire them. So these same companies now are going to have to change their policies if they want to have a, a driver coming in that is, like if a company really wants this driver to come because of the fact that, hey, we could train them the way we want them to ride, you know, or drive, not ride, but do those types of things, they're going to have to, there's going to have to be some give and take. Well, let's talk about the insurance companies a second. Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of times they're crooks themselves. Yeah. I mean, if, if we're being honest mm-hmm. with each other, okay, yep. a lot of these insurance, you know, my grandfather told me when he was telling me back, back in the day where like when the roads were all dirt, you know, in Pennsylvania, and he, he said, he said, nobody had insurance back in the end, back in the beginning. He said, if you ran over a guy's fence, he said, you came back and you helped him fix his fence. It was just that simple. You look at insurance companies. Let's even take the medical industry for a second. My dad, you know the story of my dad. He was passed out on a dock that he, where he, when he went to, he, he went, went fishing. fishing. Right. He dehydrated himself. He came back and passed out on the dock. He was dehydrated. They forced him to take an ambulance. I called the ambulance. Went to the. He was in the hospital for the day. He didn't stay over the night. He didn't stay overnight. No, he got a, what, a bag or two of fluids, and they released him that day. The bill for the insurance company was like twenty thousand dollars, ridiculous, right? Or ten thousand. It was so, whatever it was. The bottom line is, he walked in there a week later, said, "I don't have insurance." Okay. I don't have insurance. This bill for you know, whatever insurance company you would have it at, there's no way that I could pay it. It would be a cash deal. And they took $2,500. It was like one-tenth or whatever of the bill that they they gave, that, that they proposed to him. They were willing to take. So they were wanting to basically rip off the insurance company. Okay, and it's no different today. Insurance is so damn high because everybody and their brother are looking to sue somebody. Exactly. That's where you hit it right there. They want to be sued. Well, that's what I'm saying. So it's like this this BS has gotten out of control with insurance companies trying to dictate, you know, who they'll insure and who they won't. Mm-hmm. 
based on whatever the case is. I'm, I'm just saying that it just gets kind of nutty when, when we now, okay, so let's say the 18 to 20-year-olds get passed through and they're allowed to drive. Now they're up against insurance companies just getting a job. You know, unless, of course, they go with the big ones. And I was reading, and I'll read it to you real quick, actually. Let me, let me read to you this here about the 21, under 21. It says, the American Trucking Association, the ATA, is applauding proposed legislation that would let truck drivers under the age of 21. And by the way, we ran a poll on TalkCDL on Facebook like a year or two ago, maybe two years ago, right? I'm going to say 80% of the truckers were all going, oh, you can't do that. These guys are like little babies. You can't put them behind a wheel. Oh, my God, don't do it. My God, Scrook, what the hell? I can't even believe the truckers were saying that. Truckers are saying don't give these guys a break. You know what? Most of these guys went to some half-ass trucking school and had, I think, 160 to 180 hours is what they call a PTDI, Professional Truck Driving Institute. And then they're put out, you go to like a CR England or one of those companies, and they let guys that have three months experience train you, okay? You become a trainer at like three months or some short term. And they're whining, these guys are whining about some 18 to 20 year old kid. And I'm gonna tell you something, what they're proposing is a little more training for these younger men and women to get their CDL. So I was a little shocked that the most of the truckers really are saying, no, don't, don't, we, that's too young for these guys. But guess what? It's okay for them at 16 and 17 to go into the Army and get shot and killed over in, in Korea or Afghanistan for their country. But it's not okay for them to drive a tractor trailer. It's okay. Now, 49 states, it's going to say 49 states, okay? 49 states in this country forever, okay? This was... 30 some years ago, all right, that I had my class, my class C, it was called, okay, class three, rather, it was called, I think it was called a class three or a class C, I think it was called class three license You're in chauffeur? Pennsylvania, which was me being able to drive a tractor trailer. So even at the age of 18, you were allowed to do it. You've been allowed to do it for the last 50 years in 49 states. Right. Okay, but the the rule is you just can't cross the state line. Which is really weird. Yeah, exactly. Like, for example, if you live in the state of New Jersey, which is 90 f- miles wide, that's it. You but can you can't go, go into can New go, York. You can go 90 miles, but you can't go into, like, say, Eastern Pennsylvania on or, 78. Or, or, or it's illegal. Or New York, like into Brooklyn. Or let's say Texas. You can drive 900 miles from on I-10 all the way till you get to Lake Charles, right? Mm-hmm. Legally. We don't Legally. allow this 18-year-old boy to drive 900 miles today or in two days. In all we'll, different terrain. Because in all different yeah. terrain, and we'll let them do this. But, oh, we, we better not trust them to go across that state line. Because whoop, 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 whoop. who knows what them Louisiana people are doing. <laughs> yep, yep. Emergency, emergency, 18-year-old crossing the state line, get him. <laughs> No, it's true though. It's like it sounds. It's like so stupid to actually look. If you want to limit these guys, limit them to like say a 500 mile radius right. we of, of home that. base or yeah. something like that. We did discuss but, that. But to say okay, he can go to the state line, but he can't cross it. I mean, come on. It's, it, There's other ways to do it. Like I said, if you live in New Jersey, yeah. you got you really or Maryland. Or, yeah, you got like the little little areas that you can't really go your box then but anyways let me finish this here's what it says 49 states allow drivers to obtain a cdl under that age but without the drive safe act now introduced by the u.s house and senate the younger drivers are barred from interstate commerce it says those restrictions exacerbate an ongoing driver shortage the nation's largest trucking association says but the new rules will give them a chance to participate in broader apprenticeship program. This bill has strong bipartisan backing because it's both common sense and pro safety, said Chris Spear, president and CEO of the ATA. The Drive Safe Act is not a path to allow every young person to drive across state lines, but it envisions creating a safety centered process for identifying training and empowering the safest, most responsible 18 to 20-year-olds to more fully participate in our industry. 
The legislation allows for the affected drivers to begin in two-step program of additional training that includes performance benchmarks. Here's what they're going to need. It says they'll need to complete at least 400 hours on-duty time and 240 hours of drive time. So that sounds like 640 hours total. That's a lot of training, okay, with an experienced... In fact, that's what it used to be. You would... Before trucking schools started popping up, you were apprenticed by your grandparents or maybe a trucking company that liked you. Maybe you were little Billy sweeping up the floors, and they started teaching you and training you. A lot of these guys understand that. Oh, I had to clean. I had to learn how to grease them. I had to learn. And really, rightfully so, you should understand. In fact, there's these guys that literally go to trucking schools that don't even know half the parts of a tractor trailer. Not, I'm not putting those guys down, but they should want to know. Right, no. These guys are going to be forced to know. 400 hours of in-class, right. 240 hours of... It's taking it back to old school, it sounds. You know, like... It, it does. Like with the long haul. They're actually like taking the a page out of the... Do. What's that? Like the bandits are trying to do, long haul bandits. Yeah, exactly. This, this legislation, legislation is actually taking a page out of old school history. You're absolutely right. It says trucks used for such training will need to incorporate active brake collision mitigation systems. So they'll have to have that on. They'll have to have what's called video even capture. So in, inward facing, all video work, and, it, and, and speed limiters set at less than 105 kilometers. What is that? I don't know anything about those things. Well, convert. Do a conversion for me. All right. So what is it? 105 km slash H. So my my guess is maybe 65 mile an hour. Did you say 105? Yeah, 105 km. So it's just um, p- p- Google um, convert km to um, miles per hour. 65. So it is 65. Mm-hmm. So the the new guys will be only allowed to go upwards of 65 miles an hour. Which is, th- most of fair. your tractors are doing that hey, now. Hey, if I'm an 18-year-old and they said, hey, boy, you got to put all these hours in and you got to have video capture and uh, and the, the braking system has to be on there for it, the self-braking and, and, and you, you're limited to your speed, I go, okay. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're I'm starting a, a career. I'm most of these be- most of these kids wouldn't care about that because they're starting a career, first of all. Second of all, yeah. it's not that much different than most of your tractors now between the cameras and the speed limiters. The only difference is, is this braking thing. I, I'm, I'm going to be a trucker. <laughs> I, I'd be like under my breath, I would have done 55. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to haggle. <laughs> you gave me 65. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so, but yeah, but that's the truth. So... I think it's an uphill battle, but at least it's it's getting brought forward. I think that the training that they're going to get is over the top, which is really good. Okay? And he said it's not going to be for everybody. So you, they're only going to take certain people. My guess is if you're a young guy out there right now uh, hoping and praying that they're going to pass this law for you, I would tell you young young people. You young whippersnappers. No, whippersnappers <laughs> are for old people. You have to be a whip. You can't be a whippersnapper unless no, you're old. No, no. Or did the no, old people call them whippersnappers? No, the old people call them. Oh, that's right. They did call them whippersnappers. Wow. All right, you young whippersnappers. What is a whippersnapper? <laughs> what the know. hell is it? Well, I mean, like, if you're calling somebody a whippersnapper, mm-hmm. what what even is it? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, uh, me. look that up. I want to know what is a whippersnapper. We'll look it up. This is this is. Uh, it's high time we've right. looked up this word, whippersnapper, definition. So anyways, if you're a young young man, young lady, and you really have aspirations of being a trucker. <laughs> it like popped right up. You got whippersnapper <laughs> definition. Uh, let, go ahead, let's hear it. All right, and this is on Wikipedia. It's got to be right. Whippersnapper or whippersnapper, they either have a combined word or two separate words I is a t- young impertinent person it may also refer to of english folk group yeah well that, we, that they must be a group called whippersnappers so it's an yeah. impertinent person mm-hmm. so listen listen young people if you do have aspirations of being a trucker i would i would tell you they're not going to take everybody how they're going to be choosing, I don't know, but it's oh. a safe bet to say don't get any tickets. Yeah, as a your young MVR person. is probably, uh, yeah. and you know, maybe also what you're like grading, and, like your schooling, how you did in school. And maybe don't get arrested. You know, I don't know. There may be something to do with that for the criminal, imi- for yeah. yeah, criminal background. They may be looking at 18 year olds going, look at this guy, he's got like a history of bre- breaking in houses. 
we're not going to do that with yeah, him no because his, and... his maturity levels down. All I would say is if you want to be a trucker, Ruthann, they really need to keep their ass clean. And I mean that sincerely. No tickets. Drive safely. Don't get into accidents. Be polite and courteous on the road. And if you're wanting to be a truck driver, God love you. I hope you, I hope you become one. I really do for anybody that literally wants to be a trucker. You're looking over, Ruthann. What are you looking at? None. Okay. So can we move on? Anyways, there, that's my opinion on, on, the, on the young trucker thing. I know that a lot of people disagree with me on that because I've seen the post before. But myself, and I knew a lot of people as young guys that grew up in the industry, that can, I, I've seen little five-year-old, or well, sorry, I shouldn't say five-year-old, 10-year-old kids on YouTube shifting, shifting trucks because their parents have taught them these kids know more than some adult men because they're taking the time to do it. Oh, yeah, i seen that video, too, of the young boy. My, I, You know, Johnny Acid was telling me, we're going to get a video of this. He's got this guy that he visits every now and then. It's a shop. And you go inside the shop, and there's this literal seven-year-old kid. Like, you see sparks flying. He's under the truck welding. He's like a welder, and he started at four. <laughs> it's like, and, and, the, and John's like, What's up with the kid? And and it's his dad that's like under another truck. He goes, yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's been doing it three years. Just somebody that wants to learn. So why not? You know, in America, we think people are too young for certain things. In old times, man, kids were, they grew up fast. Well, yeah, because back in the times where yeah. our grandparents were young, they were learning how to maintain and do a farm. They were learning how yeah. to do life. Yeah, we they weren't stop. playing like our kids did. We got to stop pussifying our kids, mm -hmm. okay? Let's stop making pussies and little sissies out of our boys and girls out there. They got to protect them from everything. Okay, gr let them grow up and get some calluses on their damn hands so that they can kick the world's ass when they become adults instead of being afraid of the freaking world. Young truckers, more power to you. Don't let anybody crush your dream. Ruthann, let's move on. How about a sponsor? Who you want to talk about? Um, Rev. Rev? Mm -hmm. Rev's an insurance company. We it just is. got done talking about insurance. Well, mm -hmm. Rev is actually the provider for insurance companies. They're, what they are is uh, an agent that, that will find you the best rates. Exactly. And that's really what you need in these rough, tough times of mm -hmm. everything going the heck up. And, and we've often told everybody, if you really would like to save a dollar for a two, three-minute phone call, Pick up the phone, Ruth Ann, and what's the phone number? 800-347-5373. What's the worst can happen? You wasted three minutes because they couldn't do it, but they're claiming they can. So for three minutes of calling somebody, I would call Rev, especially if you have two, three, four trucks mm -hmm. and your rates have gone up. Or you're trying to be new. Hey, something else you should know. We were told long ago, you're supposed to at least check your insurance rates every two to three years and even change companies because a lot of times... They creep your rates up mm -hmm. when somebody else can keep your rates down. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Moving on. Hey, so I was checking out this on. this ad on, you know, Comcar. Like, mm -hmm. we, we did some work for those people a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says Comcar bankruptcy liquidation plan approved. But uh, listen to this Listen to this article. I'm, I'm, it says a federal judge approved plans to liquidate what little assets remain of bankrupt trucking company, Comcar Industries, ostensibly real estate, whatever that is. I guess that's who's doing it. The Chapter 11 liquidation plan received approval on Wednesday in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware. The remaining assets will be sold through two trusts with an expected recovery of $23.4 million, according to the court filings. And I was thinking about this. You know, in our time, in the, in the last couple decades, I couldn't tell you how many people forget about companies. Like, you guys see the company Roadrunner out there. They're a big owner-operator company. But there was a company called Roadrunner before them that was huge. They were owned by Eck Miller. And these were big, giant companies. Thousands of trucks went out of business. Just like that. Bankruptcy. One day, drivers are calling in. Doors are locked up. How about Arrow? Arrow Trucking. In fact, the guy that P Pill Finder or whatever his name is just got out of prison. Bad management. He was bilking the company of millions of dollars. I mean, you're talking Celadon. How about Burlington Motor Freight? How about 
unbelievable charger. I remember when charger went out of business. These are how about um, what was that flatbed company? They actually started back up a few years ago, but they're not near as big as they were. They were green and yellow. I can't think of their name right now. Um, BP or something. Oh, I was like gonna that. say Pemberton, but I'm no, 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 Pemberton's still in business. Mm, that's just, why I was like, mm. yeah. I'm just saying, all these mega companies. It's nothing new, but most of the time these guys go out of business, it's bad management. I'm going to tell you that right now. And the reason I said is because I knew, I, I, we did a little bit of work with Comcar like maybe 10 years ago. and Or not even 10 years ago, maybe five, six, seven years ago. And I'm going to tell you something here in Florida, Ruth Ann, do you remember they had a, uh, a pneumatic tank division? And... They were advertising for drivers, and literally, these guys would be out and home on the weekends. But you know what their average gross was? Five to eight hundred dollars. That's it. They mm-hmm. grossed that. Mm-hmm. So when you took the taxes out, right, that meant they were going to bring home three to five hundred dollars. Clear as a trucker. It's like how how much can we insult the truck driver? How can we do it? What's the best way to insult a trucker? Go in his pocket. Go in his pocket and rip him off. I and mean, that's for anybody, but a truck driver works very hard for their money. Well, I'm not even saying the comp car was ripping them off. What I am saying is comp car needed to raise their damn rates because it said they were losing money out the yin-yang. So if you're losing money, that means you're not managing your company right. You didn't get your rates up in time. And next thing you know, okay, you're paying your drivers insulting rates, and it's all going to hell, honestly. So now here you are. A few years later, and Comcar has filed a huge bankruptcy. It says about $15 million would be available to creditors. According to liquidation analysts filed in the court January, most will be distributed to secured creditors with $3.1 million left for unsecured creditors with uh, about $78.6 million in claims. What, remain, what remains amounts to table scraps of a massive privately held company that operated across the U.S., the heart of this Florida-based company. Its trucking operations was sold in a series of bankruptcy deals in 2020. So they're still, it looks like they're still going, but it's really not them. So it says TFI International, and it even shows that they are actually on 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 the, uh, the, 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 NASDAQ, they're, they're a trading company. It says they made three acquisitions from Comcar during its buying spree that year. That was uh, in 2020. The Canadian-based company picked up Comcar carriers, CCC Transportation, CT Transportation, and MCT, which I know one was a one was the ones down here. That was CCC. I think MCT was the reefer. Was that the reefer division that was out in Arkansas? Mm -hmm. Like they had a big, because we knew the guy that ran it out there. Mm -hmm. Real, actually super nice guy. Awesome guy. Um, But, you know, so apparently they're still going. And I sure hope that the drivers are getting paid better. And I sure hope they brought the rates up. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Every bankruptcy we've ever seen comes down to bad management. Yeah, it always comes. uh, And most, most of the, if anything is going to have a failure, it's because the person at the top is not managing it right or the person that's above the worker doesn't know how to help is is about the worker is doing it right but the person that's their boss doesn't want to listen and help improve they they think they know it all that kind of stuff but anyways yeah when you think i'm going to tell you something like i've been involved in lots of sales and it's so true there's an old saying if you if you ask something if you ask too cheap for something, people think they're getting something bad. Mm-hmm. If you sell something too cheap, if you sell your labor, if you sell your freight rates, if you sell anything cheap, they're gonna think you're a cheap company. People think, oh, I'll just be cheap and I'll get everybody's business. Not so. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. When you're way underneath your competitors' prices, most of the time you aren't getting it. You're not going to get 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 the right business. You're doing business the wrong way. You know, just by trying to undercut everybody does not make you some management guru. In fact, in the long run, this is what happens to your company when you sell out for cheap rates. And first off, cheap rates gets cheap drivers. Right. Most companies that pay cheap, cheap labor can only hire drivers that really can't get hired anywhere else. Bring up your rates and you'll get good drivers also. And your insurance rates will go down because the better drivers are going to have less accidents. Well, I have something that goes right with that. What do you got, Rudan? Well, 
first. Yeah. Let's say. Are we moving on? Yes, we're gonna. Are you done? I can be done. I just wanted okay. to bring that up. That that you know that the the actual. And I didn't. I knew that there was something going on with them. I knew that they had filed. It's funny though. Here they are. Like I said, this TFI International um, has acquired most of them, and I guess they're still running because I went on the Comcar website. Mm-hmm. And you click on it for drivers, and it's got a list of the companies, and you click on the application, and the Intelli app pops up. So they are definitely still f- in full swing, and I'm, 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 gonna ma- I'm imagining they're probably a better company today. I don't want anybody out there to that you know think that I'm saying, hey, they're still like that. But there's a reason why we got to a bankruptcy. Okay, we, we can we can call out the big white elephant in the room. It's his name is Mr. Bankruptcy. So you wouldn't there wouldn't have been a, a, some kind of a bad dealing if you if you didn't have to file bankruptcy. So hopefully that's passed and this TFI International is running the company right and the drivers are being taken care of and the customers are paying what they should pay, not getting away with all kind of cheap freaking freight rates to where trucking companies are hurting. Any, I'm going to tell you, if I got a message real quick for all you manufacturers out there. I don't care if you're a butter maker, if you're a milk producer, if you're a furniture producer, if you produce cars, if you haggle and rip off the trucking companies, it hurts the industry, especially the working man, and it hurts the trucking companies. So every time you try to cheapen and cheapen and cheapen, Oh, we're just trying to better ourselves. You know what? You're screwing people, okay? You're getting fat with all the stuff you're producing, and then you're trying to rip the trucking companies off by letting everybody beat each other up to haul your cheap-ass freight. So there's my message to you. Start, start being a part of the solution and not a part of the problem, Mr. Manufacturer, okay? You know what? I, know, I met a manufacturer in New Jersey. I swear to you, I was doing backhaul coordinating. I was talking to this lady, and, and everybody knows knows back in the day, people would offer, these trucking companies would even go to these manufacturers and go, hey, we'll even do it for 50 cents a mile just to get off the East Coast so we can get back out to Chicago and get better freight, right? And she, the lady that was in charge, used to tell me, she goes, anybody that offered that cheap to haul it, I would absolutely never give it to them, ever. I would never, I would never sign a deal to have anybody haul it that cheap. She was doing the right thing. You know, and she could have, she could have just about got free, you know, freight uh, or free trucking for her freight because people were that desperate. And that's the problem with places like Florida, okay, where there's less industry and everybody wants to haul. You guys ought to be ashamed of yourselves when you, when you let trucking companies kill each other just to survive. That's a joke, okay? And it annoys the crap out of me. Let's move on. Thank you. You're welcome. I was on a rant there. Oh, really? Yeah. How wow. about a sponsor? How's NCI doing? National Carriers. Mm-hmm. That's that's an that's there's a, an example of a great company. Yes, it is. That's a, I mean not because they're our sponsor because we've gotten to know them. I mean they're owned by a, they're owned by National Beef. They don't do broker freight. They don't have their bri- drivers touching freight. I mean honestly, the the average guy that does over the road right there probably makes seventy to eighty grand plus benefits. Gets home and has the best equipment. I mean, is how how much better can you get? Call honestly. Them. I know guys right now, they're going, well, you know, I'm making 80000 and I'm 1099 Yeah, okay. You got no benefits. You got to do your own taxes. At the end of your life, you're going to get screwed when it comes to Social Security and everything else. Enjoy the money while you're getting that couple extra dollars now. I mean, honestly, there's all kind of pros and cons to both ways you're doing things. Exactly. But, but National Carriers, their phone number, 888-311-7076. Pick up the phone. Give these people a call. They have regional. They have a new thing called Flex Home Time where if you give them, I think it's like a week or so, they'll get you home. And no matter where you live, in their, in their hiring area, they have this new thing called Flex Home Time, which is amazing. So you can have the best equipment and probably get home a lot more because they're changing their ways of, of keeping people out, you know, for long periods at a time. Anyways, moving on, Ruth, and you said you got something. Yeah, um, we were talking about uh, accidents. Well, the FMCSA has now admitted that most large truck fatal crashes don't even cite the truck driver. So I'm going to read the article. Mm. I found this on a, on a website called Landline. Yeah. Landline. Yeah, I mean, we all know who Landline is. <laughs> Good. Good. Landline, let's hear it. The number of fatality crashes involving large trucks increased in 2019, but more than 90% of the trucks 
dri- truck drivers involved in those crashes did not receive a moving violation. Wow. As part of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration Office of Analysis Research and Technology Forum, on March 10th, the agency presented the latest trends in fatal crashing involving commercial motor vehicles. According to the statistics from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Fatality Analysis Reporting System, uh, Bill Bannister of the M- FMCSA, outlined the recent uptick in large truck fatality crashes. The fatality crashes have increased from 4177 in 2016 to 4479 in 2019. So that's what, like 300 more trucks or more crashes. There has been an increase in each year. Um, in 2017, there was 4367 fatal crashes. How many was 2019, did you say? And no, in, in 2019, there was... 4479. So each year they've gone up. In 2018, there was 4461. So they've gone up, you know. Yeah, but I think over like the last couple decades, it's four or five thousand even. It's hit in the previous years. So it's gone up and down, but it's right around the right mark there. But you're saying 90%. Of those accidents, the driver, the trucker was not cited. Exactly. So even to say, say you have a four thousand, a, a year where four thousand deaths were involved in a tractor trailer accident, nine times four is thirty six hundred. So out of four thousand, thirty six hundred would have been faulted by the the four wheel vehicle. Right. It says after they dive deeper into the statistics, they show that the trucks typically aren't the problem in these crashes. According to the statistics, 90.6% of the truck drivers involved in the fatal crashes in 2019 did not receive the motor vehicle or moving violation. Even more, the truck drivers in these cases had no driver-related factors recorded in 67% of the time. So what they're finding is two-thirds of the truck's fatal crashes have no driver-related factors um, for the truck driver. That compared to only 40% of the Passenger vehicles, drivers having no factors cited to them. So in other words, 90% of the drivers, or I'm sorry, 67% of the time, truck drivers, there's nothing even relating to being a truck driver being the issue, where 40% of the uh, passenger vehicles, they are the, you know, they have, they have no issue. So... The most common driver-related factor attributed to truck drivers was speeding of any kind, which was 7.6% of the drivers, or 7.6% of the crashes was from um, speeding. Speeding. Mm -hmm. Followed by distraction or inattention at 5.3%. Wow. Impaired from fatigue, alcohol, or illnesses, 4.7. Failure to yield. Really, failure to yield is 4.6%. Well... I mean, honestly, failure to yield is a big thing, especially if you've ever driven in Ohio. They think yield means gas on it. Yeah. I mean, I'm serious. Yeah, I'm telling you Ohioans. I mean, everywhere I've driven in the United States, Ohio was one of the worst places that I've ever seen somebody that doesn't yield when they're coming, they're merging onto an interstate. They fly on and, and they don't slow down. They will come right in front of you, right off the ramp. And cause you to lock your brakes up. And I've seen it a million times. Well, careless driving is a 4.4% factor. Other factors making up less than 4% include vision obscured by weather or other factors, improper lane use, failure to obey traffic signs, following improperly, and road conditions. Those are the actual... So road conditions probably weather related road conditions. Well, or it just, just may, maybe maybe potholes or um, yeah. something to that effect. You know, maybe maybe they something. weren't you know plowed right. But if you add it up now, it's seven point six, five point three, four point seven, four point six, four point four, and four. What mm. does that equal? About thirty percent. That is actual driver related incidences. But but due to okay. Right. You know, speeding, distraction, fatigue, illnesses, yeah. and then they're... Well, I'm, honestly, I mean, you could, if you asked most truck drivers out there, and not because truckers know everything, but really, mainly because, if you want the truth, we see it. 
we see it all day long where some four-wheeler goes in front of you and brake check, brake checks you, or he cuts in front of you, takes a chance, or he's just zipping in and out of traffic, or he's merging, or, you know, whatever the case is. I was really surprised at the distraction part. I would almost think that almost every accident is due to distraction. Because you didn't see. Most of the time, it's like, well, I didn't see it. I didn't see that guy coming. I didn't see this. That's because you were flying and not paying attention, or you're on your phone, or whatever. Distraction or inattention. Yeah, I mean, 5.3. Right. I would have thought that would have been 100%. Somewhere along the line, distraction has something to do with just about every accident. I would think that, if you think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, the the only way distraction, to me, doesn't come into play is if you're going through a green light, and some clown, well, runs the red light. That would have been distraction. He didn't see it. So, yeah, that would be distraction, too. So, I don't know. I would almost think that distraction should be a lot higher. If I don't think they're defining distraction correctly. Anyways, let's move on. Can we move on? Or Moving on. All right. Um, J.J. Keller. Tell me about J.J. Keller, one of our sponsors. They are a right hand to the left hand of driving. Honestly and truly, they they're like a a an office, mm-hmm. you know, in your portfolio, nice. in your folder, in your back pocket. They are your personal office. They'll file all your paperwork that you need. If you're especially if you're a new new guy becoming, a, a lot of guys are becoming owner operators out there. It's like the mentors, you know, it's like a mentor to a truck driver that's wanting to start. Their program is very 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 cost effective. You would not believe how cost effective until you call them. But not only that, though, think about the headaches they can save you if you get an audit. You're a young, you're a young trucking company, and you think, oh, I'll be fine. I'll file it this way. And then you get an audit, and then you find out that stuff wasn't filed right, certain papers hadn't been filed, whatever the case is, from drug consortium to all kind of, of, of paperwork that has to be turned in every year, 2290s, all that crap, right? And next thing you know, you get an audit, and it costs you a lot of money. It costs you more than what, it was, what yeah. their fee would have been. Call these people. I'm serious. They could take like the headaches out of your owner operator, your 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 new trucking company that you're trying to form. Let them do their job so you can do yours better. JJ Keller, eight 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 six zero one two zero one seven. I'm serious. Call these people up, eight 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 six zero one two zero one seven. Tell them Toxidl told you to call. Same with all the rest of our sponsors, please. Ruth Ann, I got something else I want to talk about. Okay. All right. So check this out. Listen to this. This is on trucker.com. 10 challenges and opportunities ahead as trucking pursues zero emissions. Now, I, I got to tell you, this is, they, actually, this article makes a lot of sense. And, I've, and I'm sitting there going, California and their goofiness, okay, they're the ones that started this by, I forget what year, they want zero emissions. Okay, so you don't want any vehicles that are run by a gas or diesel motor because you can't get away with with it being zero emissions on, on any gas-powered motor. But here's the question. Your jumbo jets, do they have to be battery-operated too? I know they have battery-operated planes right now, but who the hell is going to get in a 747 that runs on just battery power? Because I guarantee you they give off a lot of emissions. Lawnmowers. <laughs> well, no, a lot of people have. Look at our buddy Sam in the church. He's got a... a electric lawnmower everything out there that runs on gas are you gonna tell like the rednecks up in the mountains and and their atvs and all that are running around zero emissions i i don't think it's gonna happen and and even this article says it's nice be ready but it's gonna be a long time coming i'm gonna tell you why they're gonna tell you and this makes sense trucking uh truck manufacturers produce Roughly 600,000 trucks a year for the industry. They would need, it would take you six to 10 years to get that many even produced for the United States just to be zero emissions to begin with. That's just tractor trailers and, and box trucks, not to mention motorcycles and cars. Just, I mean, how are you going to get to zero emissions? It's just this crazy. They're no, thinking, they're, they're thinking, you- third, I think like, 38% by 2035, maybe. And what they're, what they're telling you is if you live in the state of California and... Well, it's not just vehicle, California. I just think California started it. This is, this is talking about the United States here. Well, here's the thing is... Zero emission. You have people that bought a car and they're still emitting 
you know, some might have a catalytic converter, some might not need it, you know, whatever the case and whatever. might be. But you're telling everybody now that they are mandatory needing to get new vehicles mm -hmm. and spend all that money on getting a new vehicle when some of them took everything they have to get the three or five thousand dollar car that they have now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, th that's, that's a good point. Like people that are poor that only buy used five hundred to two thousand dollar cars, they're not gonna find a a five hundred dollar electric car to buy in the next ten years when okay, you might as well start getting donkeys and horses back in the picture for and don't cows fart emissions? Like <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> <laughs> Don't they give off gases? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like they're trying to they're trying to get away with all this stuff and they're, it's ridiculousness. And here's the other thing. Let me just bring this up too. Batman, riddle me this. That they, they haven't even proven these electric vehicles to even last yet. Yeah. They haven't even proven that they can that they're going to last, and they sure don't have fueling stations for them everywhere for when people are running out. I mean, but I will tell you, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag on this one. Meow. Meow, meow. There is a battery right now that's in production. It's not in production. It's in the mix right now, all right? And that battery takes five minutes to charge and can go 10 years. Yeah, I mean, it's a 10-year battery or something like that, and it can go... A thousand miles on a charge, supposedly. And I got this from a good source, and it's about to be unveiled. Now, you guys are probably going to add BS, but I'm telling you, this is what I was just told by a guy that doesn't BS. This Floyd mm. told me about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. He's in the church, and he is a, an a, amazing, super smart, amazing guy. And he doesn't, this guy doesn't even joke with anybody. He's very serious. And, but nobody knows the name of the battery. And they don't know the name of the guy. All they know is it's under hush hush, and this guy is right now probably talking to Mo Elon Musk and Gates and everybody that's going to be big, you know, backers of this, which would make sense mm -hmm. if I was him. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's the case, then yes, it's a game changer. Um, is it going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. It'd be nice to invest in it if we can find out what it is. If anybody finds out what it is, please get me involved since I just turned you on to it. But the bottom line is, you know, this stuff hasn't even been proven yet. Okay. Zero emissions. It's a great fantasy. Let me read it to you. It says, trucking ZE or zero emissions future is near, but not that close. Penske's Paul Rosa recently detailed some of the challenges and opportunities ahead during the historic trucking industry transformation that is just getting started. This is everybody's want for. It says, with more battery electric and other zero emission commercial vehicles getting closer to the mainstream, there is a buzz among fleets about converting their diesel guzzling trucks into alternative powered vehicles of the future. But a lot still has to happen before the trucking industry transform into zero emissions future. The historic transformation of the trucking industry is getting closer, but it's not here yet. I wish it would be faster because customers are very excited about this, but I don't really know that we are going to see it happen as fast as we want it to. Paul Rosa Sr., Vice President of Procurement and Fleet Planning for Penske's Truck Leasing, said March night during a speech at NTEA's 2021 Work Truck Show, which is being held virtually. There are about 4.5 million uh, Class 4 through Class 8 vehicles on U.S. roads today. Each year, truck makers build what I told you, 600,000 new Class 4 through 8 vehicles for all the various commercial and government applications. It says, let's say that the OEMs were ready to build only zero emission trucks and technology would support your operation. So the only trucks that are going to be built are zero emission. If we use that same 4.5 million trucks on the road today, hear that, Ruthann? There's 4.5 million total trucks on the road today, but only 600,000 they're capable of building a year. So you, it, would, it would take you forever. He says, as the bar, he says, and only use the 600,000, which is the max average that could be built in a calendar year, it would take eight to nine years to turn over the entire commercial fleet to zero emission. That's just tractor trailers. 
Now, just, now throw in all your cars, motorcycles, ATVs, like you said, um, lawnmowers, chainsaws, everything. Trains. Trains. Every, well, trains are steam-powered, aren't they? Or coal. Yeah. Well, well, I guess some they still probably, they probably have motors too. But yeah, Amtrak, I'm sure that's not steam. But anyways, but the bottom line is now you got to find a way to get and you know the the friendly skies. I even if it were to change over to all electric and battery operated vehicles, it, it, it I think it goes on to say. Here's what it says. It says Penske doesn't anticipate more than a 38 percent conversion by 2035. So that's even right now uh, 14 years before we even see 38% of the vehicles on the road are electric. They'll still be gas motors. And are you going to tell all these muscle head guys, or mu- not muscle, muscle car guys that own old Camaros and old Chevelles and all this stuff that they now can't start their cars because of zero emission? Are you serious? California and the rest of the United States, you're going to tell the, the one of the most coveted things in American history, the muscle car well, and the collector's cars, that yeah. they can no longer start them up? you got to be insane. Jay Leno is one person that used to showcase how many vehicles he had. He had like, what, 17 cars in his collection or something at one time? Yeah. None You're are You're going to tell him, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have a lot of celebrities, a lot friends. of people that are yeah. very big into, yeah, we have a friend that's very big into his collector cars. But you're telling them now they can't, you know, after collecting for their whole lifetime, that they cannot do anything with those cars. Hey, Ruth Ann, then there's the gas and oil industry, which controls like half the world or mm-hmm. 90% of the world, you know, from Iran to the United States. We've already gone to war once or twice Fuel, on this kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. gas, na- uh, gas and, and diesel and all that stuff they pump out of the ground. You're going to now tell them automatically all of a sudden. Now, I know it takes oil to build things. Believe it or not roads are made of oil like it's oil products you know tires or or a product of oil all that stuff but still gas and diesel and kerosene is the main seller of 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 petroleum that comes out of the ground i'd like to see how you're going to replace the trillions of dollars they make a year i don't know that they're going to take this laying down either so hey ruth ann until we meet again i think we've probably talked enough on this episode of talk cdl trucking podcast what do you think i don't know if it was that we there he always asks we there's no we you talked a lot i did yes okay so i'm going to give you my word of the day okay i'll let you talk hold on word of the day from word genius yep a lore file a lore file a lore file a lore file interesting i have no idea what it even is. Is it sound? How do you spell it? A I L U R O P H I L E. No idea. A cat lover. <laughs> there you go. There's no Allura files in our house. So if there is <laughs> Especially <a> our dogs. <laughs> they eat cats. <laughs> Sorry, kitty. <laughs> so if you are wanting to <laughs> talk to someone. And just totally freaked them out. So I'm, like, I'm a Laura file. No, I mean, look, because cat- not many people are going to know what that is. They're thinking a Laura file. Are you a creep? <laughs> that's what they're going to think first. No, that's a pedophile. <laughs> no, they're yeah, still going to think it's a creep. Uh, no, but seriously, a Laura file. Honestly, I'm not putting cats down or cat lovers. Honestly, I like cats. Cats are outdoor animals. And honestly, when you have litter boxes in your house, I'm just going to leave it at that. Anyways, bottom line is we don't have cats. We're not cat lovers. I don't hate them. My dogs would eat them, and therefore we're not a lure. If I had a cat, and, and that if you would have a go cat to the bathroom yeah. in the toilet and flush like it, like Jinxie on yeah. Meet the Fockers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If I had Jinxie, I'd be happy. I would do a cat thing. Although I would, I'm totally allergic to him, so it wouldn't last. But you know. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I would, I'd have I to have had, a hairless cat that's Jinxie. I had cats when I was a kid, and you know what? The cats, the cats loved. They were so cool. My cats were. They would come in. They do their thing, but they were always at the door to go right back out. Those cats would be out all night. My one cat, he'd go for days. 
He was out making other cats, you know? That's what he was doing. He was a lover. I guarantee it. But sometimes he'd come home with a few scratches. He'd get into a fight with another cat. But they do not want to... Your cats don't want to be inside. When you bring your cat in and you think, oh, I got a cute little cuddly feline named Oscar or whatever his name is, and you're petting him and, and he's purring and you think he's loving you. There's that, that long-winded talking you're doing again. All right. <laughs> I do like cats. I just don't have them. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.